What's going on everyone? Let's talk about the quarter Amazon just had and let's talk about why Amazon's not doing poorly at all, regardless of what people are saying. Um, this is gonna be a pretty long video. I'm gonna go over this quarter, a couple of the past quarters during the pandemic. I'm gonna go over some charts and uh, tell you why I think Amazon might be set for a pretty big year. So uh, let's just get right into it. And if you like this video, just give it a like. I'd really appreciate it. Um, this past quarter, Amazon had slowing sales is what we were told. And the stock took off after hours. It was up like 10%, up into like 120, I believe. And then it tanked. And now it's kind of had a little relative strength the last couple days. But... What I want to talk about is, so the online store business, which is their first party business, that was only up 3%. Now, that business is probably their least important business. You know, they, they, they put in so much effort. The margins are razor thin. It's not really a business of any importance to me. And neither is this physical store business, which was up 7%. That's your Whole Foods, your Amazon Fresh, all that stuff. Uh, maybe one day when they start deploying their walkout tech, maybe I'll care then. But for now, this is just a chain of grocery stores. And for the same reason, I don't have any Albertsons or Kroger's in my long-term holdings. Now, what has me excited is this third-party business, okay? This is Amazon's real bread and butter. You know, I know everyone always talks about AWS. And look, while AWS is an incredible business... Amazon's business is retail and it's third party retail because that's sellers selling their stuff on Amazon and Amazon coming in with these huge take fees, okay? And when we look at this quarter, it was 29.8 billion in fees to Amazon, okay? And you look at the previous quarter, 36 billion, obviously that was the Christmas quarter, that's their biggest one, but what you're talking about is 66 billion in fees in the last two quarters. That is unbelievable. And more importantly, it was up 20% year over year. Okay, now, why is that important? We heard during COVID that it was peak Amazon, right? Uh, everyone's at home, everyone's shopping online. When it's over, people won't be shopping online anymore and they're gonna return to the stores and Amazon's gonna see a decline in sales. Now. If we go back and we pull up the COVID quarters, right? You can see here, let's scroll down. Uh, okay, right here. So COVID began in Q2 2020. And what we're looking at here is third party sales at the peak Christmas COVID quarter, right? Like December, 2020, the whole world shut down. Everyone's locked at home buying stuff. Amazon third party did 27.3 billion in sales. And that was up 54% year over year, right? Huge, huge number. Think, think of this Q2 number, right? COVID began in March, 2020, okay? Q2 was really like the brunt of COVID, right? It was April, May, June, 2020. Everyone's at home. Everyone's ordering everything on Amazon. Sales are going nuts. Uh, that was supposed to be like as good as it gets for COVID. Uh, and 18.2 billion in third party fees. And so you come back now and we're doing 29.8 billion. So Amazon has just been a monster. Their third party numbers have not slowed, right? Like even if we go to 2021, right? Q2 was the quarter where everyone got vaccinated, right? That was when everyone got vaccinated and okay, we're gonna go back to normal. Amazon was doing 25 billion in uh, third-party fees, Q2 2021. So even now, it's still up $4 billion in fees after a quarter where that was supposed to be the peak and the return to normal. So Amazon is just humming along with their main business. And for me, this is the most important part, not AWS. And the reason it's the most important part is because it, it comes with these advertising sales, which were another 9.5 billion. That is such a big number. You know, most people don't grasp how 
big this business is, but when you're bringing in 30 billion in third party fees and another 9.5 billion on top in advertising, and we know how high margin advertising is because Google, Meta, all of them break it down for us. We're talking Amazon's third party business is about a $40 billion per quarter high margin business. What a monster, right? And again, this is a business where if you go back to like 2021, you're talking this was a business where the same quarter in 2021, it was doing 6.3 billion. So ads are up about 50% two years later. That's huge, that's huge. I mean, look at these numbers. I think Meta did like high 20 billion in revenue and that's all Meta has. So what Amazon's doing is remarkable in terms of advertising and third-party fees. Now, we all know what hit Amazon. The AWS slowdown, the AWS guide down, uh, all those things. I'm not concerned there. Look, this is a business that's still doing 21.3 billion, okay? Again, go back to 2021, right? Pick a quarter, Q1 2021, 13.5 billion. Height of the pandemic, Everyone's switching over to AWS. We're still up over 50% from then. So even with that slowdown, AWS is doing just fine. It's it's going to do probably $90 billion this year. That is a very, very enormous business. So for me, what I'm looking at is, look, Amazon's retail business is dominating. I mean, completely, completely dominating. You, you you take these last four quarters right here, and this thing took in over a hundred billion dollars in third-party fees. Now, talk to any seller. They'll tell you Amazon's gouging them. They are. They're absolutely gouging them. It's, it's terrible. But as a shareholder, I mean, this is the business where Amazon's real bread and butter is going to come through, right? Like, and they're going to converge at some point where AWS is going to be making a ton of cash. The retail business is going to be making a ton of cash and Amazon is never going to look back. They're going to dial down the spending, which they did. I mean, they really dialed down the spending a lot. You know, their headcounts down almost 200,000, um, free cash flows ticking up again. It's not positive yet, but it's ticking up and Amazon is, you know, they're moving more and more into the services business, right? Like all these third-party services, subscription services, advertising, AWS, these are all services, right? You add all these up, you add all these up. This right here is about 70 billion this quarter in services. And that's incredible because it's well over 50% of their total revenue now. And that's just what you want to see. You want to see services continue to tick higher. Those are the higher margin businesses. You want to see them continue to optimize and lower the headcount. And eventually, I, I think next quarter, we're going to be back to free cash flow, if you want my opinion. And I think three or four quarters from now, we're going to be back to talking about Amazon being the most dominant business in the world because all these other businesses have their issues. Apple's got uh, its its headwinds, right? Mac sales are down 40%. Um, Google's got its headwinds. It's got to deal with chat GPT. And I know in the last week, you know, Google's going nuts because they're talking about AI now, but whatever. Google, Microsoft, they're going to be in a battle for a long time on that front. And AWS, while it is having its issues, they aren't long-term problems. Okay. AWS is still, I saw some analyst projections by, I don't know, 2032. They're still looking at like 300 billion a year in revenue. I don't like to look at projections that far out. That's kind of silly to do that. But you know, even, even if they miss that number and AWS is doing 200 billion by 2032, that is a huge, huge number. Okay. We know that logistics is a very tough business. Uh, Shopify just exited the business, right? They just sold their logistics business to Flexport, which is run by Dave Clark, who was Amazon's logistics CEO. And uh, Amazon's just right now on top of its game, right? And it's just starting to ship packages for other people. Uh, Buy with Prime is, is rolling out. I'm seeing it on more and more sites. And 
Well, that's not my favorite business. I do understand what Amazon's doing building this machine that's unstoppable, right? Like Elon Musk talked about that. You got to build the machine that, that builds the machine. And that's kind of what Amazon's doing with all this logistics. Like you're going to get to a point where FedEx and UPS are just like irrelevant. And we're, so, we're, we're getting there actually pretty quickly. Uh, Amazon's just doing fantastic things on the logistics front. Uh, it's been a rough couple of years for investors, but I think... Amazon's just getting its mojo back and more impressively everyone's saying Amazon's done so it's kind of like the perfect storm of Amazon's putting it all together while everyone's forgotten about it so let's look at some charts here right let me pull this up here and this is the daily chart and you can obviously see the highs 188 and now we're at 110 so we're still way way off the highs but let's zoom in here so what you can see with Amazon is, right, it's had that relative strength the last few days. It's over all these key moving averages. I like Amazon a lot here. It's, it, it's got a nice setup. Let's pull up a weekly chart. Here's what I'm looking at. For me, this looks like a pretty clear bottom, right? You've got a higher low here, and Amazon's trending up. I, I, I'm i looking for this 134.74 level. I mean, Amazon's got a clear road up there. I mean, it really does. You, you look at the RSI, it's pointing up. Um, I, I think Amazon can make a run to all-time highs within two years. I, I really mean that because look at this. You look at the last couple months, right? Look at the MACD turning up. It's not positive yet. We're going to get to a point in a couple months where hopefully the MACD goes positive and like this, you're going to have a run for a few months. And look, my thing is the stock market has its issues, right? We have the debt ceiling, we have all these things, and we're probably going to get a panic and push lower for a little bit. But here's the thing. The Fed is going to have to go right back to QE. They're going to have to go right back to QE at some point. They're going to pump all kinds of money into the system. It won't be good for us as inflation will rage, but equities will go up and Amazon will be a big beneficiary of it. So I, for me, I think in the next 24 months, I could see Amazon making that push back to all-time highs, okay? The, the chart's setting up for it. It's been completely broken down. You can see the divergence uh, bullish for the last few months. And look, Amazon is still, in my opinion, I mean, this, this company's worth one-third of Apple, basically, at this point. One-third, right? Should that be? I, I, I don't believe so. I, I actually think Amazon should have a higher market cap than Apple. But whatever. It, the market is what the market is. I still think this is an incredible spot here. You want to sell puts at the lows at like 82, 83. You want to buy some calls and go very long. I, I, I really do think Microsoft is not eating away at their cloud business. You, we hear people talking about, oh, Microsoft's going to overtake Amazon by a certain date. That's fine. I mean, we always knew Microsoft was more embedded with the enterprise customers. But the pie is so big that Microsoft and Amazon will both do fantastic. And more importantly, Amazon, it's one of the most bullish names in my database. I mean, there's all kinds of bullish data flow uh, coming in in the options world, put sales, call buys. I mean, Amazon's, it's ready. I mean, this thing has been through hell. I mean, you're talking basically two years of straight down. Now it's finally starting to tick up. It's up like 30% this year. I, I, I like what's going on here. I really like what's going on here. Uh, I still don't think Andy Jassy's the right CEO. I mean, uh, come this July, we're still almost 50% basically off the highs when he came in. I mean, when he came in, it was like 175. And I mean, look at this. I mean, we're at 110, I don't know, 40% off high. So I mean, he's had a rough two years as CEO. I really don't have anything notable to say about him. But um I really do think next quarter we're going to be free cash flow positive. Uh, they're making some huge, huge cuts, and business is going very, very well for them. So that's my take. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, you know, please subscribe, share it, whatever you want. But thank you for watching it all, and uh, I, I hope you got something out of it. Anyways, have a great rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you later.